guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about some basic terminology of photography. Now we're going to head over to the whiteboard in just a minute and I'll give you a rundown on the basics. That way when we talk about them during class, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, um, I need to show you in your manual the section that is titled nomenclature. Here we go. This is a, um, a diagram of your camera and all of the bits and pieces of the parts that you need to be memorize and be familiar with where they are on your camera. Don't be concerned about knowing every single one of these. If the topic comes, comes up, I just want you to know where to flip through, check it out, and be familiar with it. So take 5, 10, 20 minutes, whatever you feel comfortable with and go over these camera parts so that you're going to understand what we're talking about. Now these aren't the only pages. You've also got um, the, the LCD panel and the in the viewfinder. Here in the bottom of the viewfinder you'll see that you have all of the settings here so when you're um, viewing what you're going to take a picture of you can see what your settings here if you're looking through the viewfinder. Okay, over here, this looks like a lot. Not all of this is going to show up all at once. So this is just basically where everything will show up when, you're, when you are using that specific setting. Okay, so assignments for today are going to be this. Um, check out your camera and compare your camera to your specific Let's see, where did it go? Ah, oh, here it is. Um, check these out, but look at your cameras you're doing so you know where it goes. Okay, look at these. Write down all the definitions from the whiteboard that we're going to be doing in here in just a second. And you need to learn those terms. There's not too many of them, but they're so important because they are used a lot. And also, let me check my notes. Um, on your camera... Let's see. Let me grab mine real quick. Whoops. Okay, on your camera, there is this setting right here. It's the it's the letter P and it it's um, for program. So you're gonna use this setting today as you take your picture along with your definitions and your nomenclature and your manu and your manual. Okay, so in this P section that is all program, however you can um, change some settings if you wish. So I want you to get used to this setting and kind of play around with the different settings. I'm not going to go into specifically what um, each setting is going to do right now. Those will be further down on the lessons, but just to get to know your camera a little bit better. Go ahead and go into the creative zone over here. Go to the mode P for program and take a few pictures. But at this time, I want you to take pictures of things that remind you of Jesus Christ. So um, this can really be anything because, you know, as you know, everything relates to the Savior. So that will be today's assignment. Um, yeah, that's everything. Quiz coming up, especially on those um, terminology words, and I uh, will see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, now if you feel like these definitions are going a little bit too fast, go ahead and pause the screen so you can write down what you need in your notebook, and then push play when you've got that recording and you're ready to go. Okay, so our first term is rule of thirds. Basic idea of composition, dividing the image up into three horizontal and vertical sections. So if this is your viewfinder here, and you're looking through it, you'll imagine two vertical lines going through the bottom, separating it into three different sections, and two horizontal doing three um, more sections. And these are your hot spots. This is where the eye likes to rest, and it's just an attractive picture. So when you're taking your pictures, you want to make sure that your subject is in one of these three rows. That way you'll be able to take um, a nice picture and it applies to the rule of thirds. 
Okay, our next word is shutter speed. This is a term you're going to hear a lot. And it is how long your camera's shutter stays open. This can be read on the LCD screen or within the viewfinder. This will be measured in fractions, so it would be fractions of a second or whole numbers. For example, 1 15th means a fifteenth of a second, so really, really fast. And they can even be faster than that, like a thousandth of a second, or 15 seconds, or longer, depending on how long you want your shutter to stay open. Okay, next word is aperture. It controls how much of your picture is in focus or not. So whether it's clear or blurred. It is measured by an f-stop, so that's a term you'll hear as well. So if you have an f-stop of an f1.4, that enables a very high shutter speed, so not so much is in focus. Um, an f2.8 enables almost as high shutter speeds, more in focus, and that's better for portraits. An f11 needs a, sh a slower shutter speed, um, much more is in focus, and then an f22 needs the slowest of shutter speeds. <clears throat> Everything you point your lens at should be in focus, so that would be used for landscapes and so on. Um, and a flash could be used with that if there's not a lot of available bright light. Here we've got depth of field. Um, this is what the range of distance within the subject that is acceptably and sharply in focus. It can be controlled using your f-stops. Okay, so the ISO, or the ISO, is the light sensitivity on your camera sensor. See, when they just had film, it was a sensitive, or the sensitivity of the film um, with the light coming in, but now that the film is gone, we're moving to more of a digital world. It's a sensor. So the higher the ISO, the more sensitivity and the more grain that you can get. Um, it looks a lot grainier. Um, the lower the ISO, um, the less grainy it is. So you can set your ISO at 100, and that's good for daylight. ISO at 400 is good for twilight, and that will give you a little small grain. ISO at 1600 is low light, high action. So you can stop um, fast motion. And then an ISO of 6400, that's better suited to low light and fast action, but delivers grainy images. So you will be able to see um, a graininess to your picture. It won't be as sharp, but the quality of your picture goes up depending on the quality of your camera so it just depends on how much you want to spend on your camera. Manual mode. A shooting mode on your camera that enables you to control every aspect of shooting um, including the shutter speeds, the ISO settings, aperture, um, a bunch more that you can switch and change and get creative with. It's nice to be able to go to your manual mode, know what you want to take or how you want the picture to end up and be able to manipulate your camera in a way to make that image come out. It's very rewarding. Exposure. The unit of measurement for the total amount of light permitted to reach the electronic sensor during the process of taking a photograph. The two main controls are the shutter speed and the aperture, and we already talked about those. Exposure can also mean the shutter speed that you're using or a single photo. It's kind of thrown around a lot in the photography world. So it kind of depends on what the terminology in, is that you're using in your sentence. Exposure compensation is something that we will also talk about, and it's another feature that your camera has 
and it helps your image be lighter and darker depending on what you're needing for that picture. Okay, next word is lens. Now we all know what this is. We're just making sure to get all the definitions. So it's the piece of glass attached to your camera. There are many different kinds of lenses. So there can be a prime lens and that's fixed focal length with no zoom and they're usually very, very expensive. A zoom lens, and that just zooms in and out. A lens is with large apertures, say if it has an f1.4, that equals a very fast lens. Or ones with smaller apertures, say um, like an f4 or larger. Those are slow lenses. Focus. This is what the camera is mainly trying to take a picture of. So the larger the f-stop, the less that will be in focus. So you'll not notice if you see like a close-up of a flower that um, the flower is in focus, but everything behind it is all blurred. So it's a large f-stop, less is in focus. A smaller f-stop, you'll see a lot in focus, like um, a view off of a mountain. You want lots of the mountain and the valley to be in focus. Okay, so we've got the flash and that's the burst of light that comes from the camera when a picture is taken. A fill flash is something that you do just to um, fill in dark dark spots. Say you're taking a picture of someone's face and you don't want the shadow of their nose or um, their hair coming down to be in their face. That The fill flash will just illuminate that so it looks very, very nice. Also, um, there's the, the red eye flash, and that's a flash that um, goes right before the actual flash, and that's to shrink the pupils so the, the retina isn't shining through, and that's what actually gives the red eye effect. So um, there's also that flash. And our last one is the shooting speed mode. This determines how many pictures or exposures your camera will take when the shutter speed is pressed down. So when it's a, when you're doing um, a single speed, it's when the shutter is pressed down, it'll only take one picture. And to take another picture, you'll need to press the shutter again. Or continuous, and that's when the shutter is pressed down and you hold it down, and it'll keep taking pictures until a card fills up or the processor can't write any more photos to the card, so it just kind of slows it down. It needs to process it, send it to the CF card, and then it can start um, doing continuous again. Okay, make sure you have those terms written down in your notebook and study them well. You will be quizzed on them. Here's a sneak peek at what we're doing at the next lesson. It's on Kelvin and white balance. So. No matter where you are at, your white needs to look white and not blue or orange or red. Depending on your location, it's how to make it white wherever you're at. See you later, guys. Bye.